What's up, everybody? This is Eric Johnson from Think Well Coffee. Good to see you. Welcome. We're roasting. We've got our second roasting series going on here, and uh, we have a few batches that we're roasting. This series, we're focusing on the environment because that is the primary factor when we roast coffee, the thing that changes all the flavor, that is the primary thing that consequentially you have rate of rise, you have the, your profiles, you have your airflow, you have all these other things that come to it. But the first thing, number one thing we got to focus on is the environment. And so that is what we're going to do here with all of these batches. Now, I'm going to do a very different profile with this Peru. I'm going to roast Peru here. It's gonna be a really different profile from the Papua New Guinea I just did. That one was an arc. I did a big push right away and then coasted it out easy. This one, I am going to put the beans in and I'm gonna let them just sit there. I'm gonna have the heat turned up a little bit, but I'm gonna let those beans absorb the heat and then I'm gonna do my push um, a few minutes into the roast. Pretty hard push and then you're gonna pull them back. You gotta be careful with hard pushes uh, because if you do it at the wrong time or you do it too much or you aren't thinking about all the other factors, uh, you can hurt your beans. I mean, you can burn them, you can tip them, you can do all these things, whatever, you're ruining them. So you really have to apply big forces of heat at the right time and in the right way. So you, um, how I see it is there's this window when these beans can take on heat and take them on with no problem. And that's the beginning part of a roast. The later you go in the roast, if you apply big, uh, you know, changes of heat or huge pushes of heat, you have, I mean, high likelihood of, of wrecking these beans. And when I'm saying wrecking them, I really am meaning like you're, you're frying them, you're burning them, you're toasting them. It's just like, that's, I'm not trying to have what's inside of these beans get wrecked. I'm trying to preserve it. I'm trying to develop it. I'm trying to bring it into balance. And so how I do that is I focus on the environment. And so with this batch, even though the profile will be different, all I'm thinking of is the environment, all right? So my aim on this one will be to end at the low 390s. And this ends up being kind of tricky with this kind of push, but we're trying to get to the low 390s. I really love this coffee there. Um, and I, I want to do this profile because it drastically changes a coffee which you know well and roast all the time. And how, now try this method where you let the let it just soak in the heat and then push it and drop it off. And these beans do this, uh, the, the way they take on heat totally changes it. So I, uh, I'm gonna do a three and a half pound batch of Peru. I'm gonna start in the 360s for the bean temperature. Okay, here we go. Clearing the time, getting going. Start it. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this batch at 2.75 on the gas, and and I am gonna watch. Okay, so when I'm when I'm thinking right now, I've told you we're thinking about the environment. That's where we're, now part of that is the thermocouple, the environmental thermocouple that we have here tells us what's going on here. But the other thing that tells us what's happening with these beans is our bean time, our bean temp. How, where, what time is it when it's at certain temperatures? So at one minute, where is it? At a minute and a half, where is it? Where is it when it turns around and begins increasing? Um, these are all things that you want to keep in your head. Now, what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, the beans are, are heating up and the, the drum and the environment around it is cooling down and at some point they're gonna meet and then we're, they're both gonna rise. And you're gonna see that when the bean temperature turns around and begins to, to increase again. You can see it's steadily dropping. I, I want this environment to hold some heat. You know, I'm down in the 350s. That's getting kind of low. I am gonna turn that up some because I don't want it to get too much lower than 350s and I'm gonna go up We'll see here. I think we're gonna go up to about a four and a half. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, 4.6. Okay, so here we go. We're in the 260s for the bean temperature. A minute 45, 
and this thing's just, it's in that space where the beans are about to turn around. They're about to, to catch up with that, with the, the drum, the heat, the environment, and they're gonna start increasing. Now, once I get there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let everything chill out for a minute. I'm gonna let the beans absorb some heat. I'm gonna keep the environment and that drum, I'm gonna be putting some heat into it so it's retaining it. And there's gonna be a point in, hmm, so I don't know, at about three minutes where everything's stable, the, we're like at a good spot and, I, and I'm gonna just push these beans. And I'm gonna push them really hard, I'm gonna push them really fast and we're gonna like send them. And then we're gonna pull it back and we're just gonna let them coast out. All right, so that's the goal. So here we go, 241, 263, and increasing. So we've hit our turnaround. We're increasing by not very much. This isn't a very big um, rate of rise here. And then I'm looking at, and we've also, our environment is also turned around. So we're in a really nice spot here. I'm gonna let them, I'm gonna just, we're gonna begin pushing it, okay? So we're at three minutes and I'm going up in the flame. And slowly increase. They don't necessarily have to be like, flip it, go to 10 inches right away, but I am going to pretty quickly move it up. And, you know, I can hear the sound inside of the drum. I can hear what's happening. It's changing. The sound is changing. The quality of the sound is changing. And that is totally linked to airflow, to flame, and all this stuff. So I'm considering that as I'm moving my flame. So I'll pick how high am I going to go according to that. And I... I'm gonna go all, I'm gonna push it. We're gonna go all up to 10. Okay, so we're now, we're at three minutes and 45 seconds in. We've hit our highest point we're gonna get our flame to. It's 10 inches, it's full on. It's also at the same time that the changes in for these beans, they're just, it's like they're becoming alive. It's not the Mayar reaction yet. We're not there yet, it hasn't started, but it, they, they are opening. Um, chaff is being released. The, the, tone is beginning to lighten before it hits anything that looks like yellow or orange they kind of turn like a whitish color and in my mind that's them they're opening and livening up bright green with some white hues four minutes 30 seconds our environmental temperature is still pretty low which is cool um, our beans are now entering the mayor. So now, here we go. We're not thinking about rate of rise. We're not thinking about a profile or a screen. We're thinking right now about the environment. And this moment, I have been pushing these beans for a minute at that 10 inches flame. They're, enter they're now going through this huge transformation, going into the mayor reaction. And it's at this point that I am gonna, I gotta let it, I gotta push it a little bit more we're five minutes, 300 degrees for the beans. The chaff is being released, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my airflow. Airflow is gonna make the amount of pressure that this drum and these beans are taking, it's gonna expand it. We're making the room larger. It can handle more, more force and moving things through. And now I'm gonna let that sit and then I will say in about 15 seconds or so, I'm gonna to begin to do this very long, very slow pull back on the heat. So we didn't touch the air, didn't touch the heat, let it be, slowly increase the heat, really increase the heat. Now we're opening the air and we're gonna do this pulling back, okay? So we're pulling back, starting right now. 10, six minutes, 320 degrees for the beans, 310. So what's crazy about this is I'm gonna pull back my flame setting nice and slowly over probably a minute. But the, the giant force of the push has taken place. And so the environmental temperature reading is, may end up looking pretty different from other roasts in terms of where does it end up landing. But I know that I have given enough um, heat in this roast to get these beans where I want them to go. And 
We are going to slowly bring it down. We're approaching seven minutes. And these things are still moving pretty fast. Nothing crazy. But, and I don't actually, when I'm pulling this heat down, I'm not, I'm going to get to a spot where I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to kind of set it and I don't have to think about it. And it's going to be around the, I think it's going to be below two in this instance. So we're pulling it down, keep coming down on it. 725, 348, 434. And that's right about there. 1.2 is this, is the spot. Okay, so now we're gonna let we're gonna watch this. We're gonna be sure this doesn't the the environmental temperature, I'm not looking for it to drop off. But my as you can see, we were at nothing, tons, and it dropped it down. We're gonna we're just gonna hold this thing steady. Now I'm going to steer what happens in this environment. I'm going to steer it using the airflow here, okay? So I'm going to watch the environmental temperature, but I know that I have pushed these things, and now we're just going to go easy on them as they're approaching first crack, open up the airflow as needed, and try to stretch out the development time. Um, you know, this one, because I'm wanting it to be um, bright. I want to sit at that lower end of the row spectrum, so in the three low 390s. Now because of that, it means that I need to try to, in a short amount of time, develop these beams. And so airflow is like a very, it is like this is the application of airflow right now, because they're going to open it up and we're going to move air through. We're going to get these beams to like, that's the only way that we can develop these things is by airflow um, at this point without affecting all these other things I'm trying to do. Our environmental temperature is beginning to go down just a touch, which is okay, but I'm not wanting it to, to stay in that space. So I'm gonna increase the heat. I'm gonna go up to 2.4, okay, well, and I'm gonna watch it and kinda of see. There's been just a few first cracks, so I'm gonna say 909 is brew. 909 for his crack, and I'm gonna keep that in my head. So, all right, I'm gonna actually pull back my flame a little bit. Again, not a ton, but I've increased my heat, and I'm okay not increasing my heat. I just don't want it to sink super low. And now, all right, we're like 30 seconds into development. I got about a minute or so more, so I am gonna like pretty aggressively, <laughs> no, this doesn't look aggressive at all, but I'm gonna steadily open up this airflow now. And the, the whole environment is changing. The beans are exothermic, they're pushing out. The water molecules, H2, are splitting apart. There's this whole uh, second transformation that happens. Every roast is this first crack, okay? So that changes this environment so much. And so what we're gonna do is is sort of accompany that with opening up the airflow, opening up the environment. And I'm cool with our environmental temperature dropping. I'm like five degrees away from my finish. I'm gonna open this almost all the way and now I'm gonna just sit here. It's 10 and a half, so we're like just about a minute and a half into this. They're really, really, like I just saw being like expand. There's a lot going on for me still right now is nice we're slowly we had a nice slow um, increase in the bean temperature and we're coming up on two minutes I, I think this one's gonna end up under two minutes right at 390 which is what I would like so I think we're gonna stop it right at 11 minutes 390 and we're gonna kill the, the gas and Begin to stir. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was like a really, that was a good example of this, this profile. The reason why I, I stress the emphasis, like I, I, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for us to focus on the environment is because you are free to roast these beans any way imaginable. If you have for yourself the primary thing that you're focusing on is the environment it allows you to do very different 
uh, profiles of very different ways of roasting coffee than you would if you're focusing on just the ROR, like the rate of rise and saying, I need a steadily decreasing rate of rise. If that is your primary thing, you are binding yourself down to essentially roasting everything in one way. A roast like this, you couldn't do um, because uh, of the application of heat, how late you waited to hit it, things like that. Now, um, specific beans ha are benefited by different roast profiles. And so a roast profile like this, you would apply to different beans along the way and you would see how, how does this change the bean flavor? Like how, when I'm drinking a coffee that I roasted like this, when I'm used to roasting a profile that's a long, slow arc, and I'm now doing this to it, you're gonna see something that's like developed very differently in the coffee that left some things out and brought some other things forward. Um, you wanna do this profile with beans that you know and find out, um, it, it may, you know, I think that it changes the body considerably. So um, when you're letting that heat soak and apply into it, and then you have this room be able to push something, but you're not wrecking any of the acidity, um, you're, you're finding how can I fill this thing out while still having a low finish roast temperature, which is gonna have a lot of that acidity in there. So lots of stuff to kind of think about and play with and thanks for watching and uh, we'll check you out on the next video. All right.